cure. So let's now talk in these few minutes we have together about how to at least practically build that solution. I like to talk, you know, when we talk about reminders, we talk about grand things. When we talk about advice, I believe in talking about advice from a very practical, even minimalist point of view. Things that you can practically do, and it, that's why I don't like to share much personally, even though I read them for myself for inspiration, I don't like to share stories of the Tabi'un and the, and the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet who prayed the entire night, or recited the whole Qur'an in a week, or made dua and then it started raining, those stories, I don't share them. You know why? Because you know what happens to most of you when you hear that? Man, they were so awesome, I'm so bad. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum. That's, that's the end of the... <laughs> Man, Sahaba were really cool. I'm so going to hell. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Let's start little by little. Awwalul ghayfi qatar thumma yanhamir. The Arabs have a saying, it says, if you, it's in many other cultures too. The first of the heavy rain is just a drop, then it pours, right? Let it build little by little. The first thing you got to do is you have to discipline your life, people. I have to do it, you have to do it. You know what it means to discipline your life? Go to sleep early. Pray Isha and go to sleep. Don't go to the hookah joint until 12.30 a.m. Don't go see a movie. Don't go hang out with your friends. Don't watch Islamic lectures until 2 in the morning. Do not. It is not beneficial for you. Pray Isha and go to sleep and wake up early. Wake up before Fajr. Give yourself 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 I know it seems impossible. It's only impossible because of Netflix at night. Okay? That's the only reason it's impossible. Give the night life up. Let the night be for sleep. At least you're not accumulating sin every night. At least you're not burying your heart under more sin every night. At least you're sleeping. At least you're innocent for that much. At least that much. Then you wake up and you pray, at least start with a routine of praying Fajr on time. Start with Fajr on time. And the guys here, at least, at least once a week, guys, make it to the masjid for Fajr. At least one. I don't ask you every day. Just one day a week. Give yourselves one day a week. And you don't catch the second rakah right before the salam. Right? And then after you finish making it up, you're like, oh, masjid today. It's right. <laughs> you're like pointing at the right now. You wrote that down? You got that? You got that? Fajr? You're like, yeah, that. <laughs> Get to the masjid early Let me tell you something about Fajr in the masjid It has a spiritual impact That only people who go to it will experience It can't be explained in a lecture When you go to it When you go to the prayer And you sit there in the masjid quietly And you wait for the prayer to start And you sit there and you recite Quran And you ask Allah to forgive you in those morning hours and then you stand next to other believers and countless armies of angels and you stand and you pray in front of Allah in that early morning giving up your sleep which only happened because you gave up your nightlife when you do that even once a week the joy you will get out of it you will, as you are walking out of the masjid you will wish to yourself you did that every morning I swear to it I guarantee it you're gonna walk out of that masjid saying man I wish I could do this every morning you really will but start with once a week start with once a week don't make Friday night party night. You just came out of Salatul Jumu'ah. That's why the shayateen do extra heavy advertising for Friday night. That's why movies come out on Friday nights. Because they know they have to ruin one-fifth of the world's population's ibadah. They just went to Jumu'ah. How can we undo Jumu'ah? Well, there's a new movie premiere. Right? That same night. Let's get it all done with before its effects carry over even the weekend. <laughs> right? Make Fridays a good time. You know, let, let that be a good time. That's number one thing. The second thing is every single day, I don't ask you to recite a juz. I don't expect that much anymore. One page of Quran. In Arabic, I don't care how badly you recite. I don't care how badly you recite. If you're embarrassed of your recitation, go in a room by yourself. Lock it up. But recite it out loud. Not silently. Out loud. And before you recite, if you don't know any Arabic, turn to Allah and say, Ya Allah, I'm reciting your word only for you. And you're the only one who can make it easy for me. You, you're the only one who can make it easy for me to recite it, to memorize it, to understand it, to love it, to pray with it. You're the only one who can do that for me. Ya Allah, and I'm doing this for you. You make it easy for me. This will be your personal time with Allah Azza wa Jal outside of Salat. Ten minutes is all it takes. But you need to make that, make that time. You need to make that time in your life. And as your love for the Qur'an grows, I won't have to convince you in a lecture to give it 10 minutes. 
you'll be sitting with it 20, 30, 40, 50, an hour. That time will increase for you. It will increase for you. But it will happen on its own. It will never happen though unless you put yourself in a routine. None of these things will benefit your life until they become a routine. You really want to have a relationship with the Qur'an, start with reciting it. Even if you don't understand it. Even if, I'll say it again, even if you don't understand. Brother, I don't understand Arabic. I don't get anything out of it. Yes, you do. You don't even know what you get out of it. You're trying to imitate the words of Allah as He revealed them. You don't think there's a benefit in that? There absolutely is. My teacher, I asked this question when I was dumb, not too long ago. I asked my teacher, what's the point of reciting Quran? You don't even know Arabic. What do you get out of that? He said, let me tell you a story. This is my teacher, Sheikh Abdul Ghani in New York. He told us this story. He said, you know, a boy, he goes to the beach. And actually, he asked his dad the same question. I recite Quran, but I don't understand it. What's the point of me reciting it? So his dad took him to the beach. And he gave him a dirty bucket. It had holes in it, though. He said, go fill it up with the beach water. Go fill it up. So the boy goes to fill up the water. And he brings it back. By the time he brings it back to dad, what's happened already? And somebody goes, go fill it up again. So he sent him like five times, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. He goes, dad, there's no point, it's empty. He goes, yeah, but you notice a difference? He goes, yeah, it's clean. He goes, now you get it? He goes, oh. <laughs> now those of you who still don't get it, you're clearly on Facebook too long. <laughs> right? Your brains have melted. <laughs> right? Spend time reciting Quran. Then the third, just a little bit of, of, of practical recommendations for you guys. The surahs that you've already memorized, chances are they are from the 30th juz. Is that true? Surahs that you've already memorized, chances are they are from juz amma. One of my personal motivations to do an explanation of juz amma was just that. That if Muslims don't know the whole Quran, at least they know some things from juz amma. I, would, I don't say this out of my own, like to promote our program or anything else. I'm just giving you advice. If you guys can benefit from the recordings that we have of the 30th juz, don't listen to the whole thing. You don't have time for it. It's fine. Just listen to the surahs you've already memorized. Not a translation, an explanation of the surahs you've already memorized. The surahs that you're going to be using in prayer anyway. The ones you're going to be using in prayer anyway. So at least those surahs that you've been reciting since childhood, now you have a personal relationship and understanding of them. They've enhanced you in some way. Every time you recite them, it's an opportunity for reflection for you. It's an opportunity for you to get closer and closer to Allah's word. These things, we do them in this life. And if you can establish this routine, the last thing, I don't have a huge list of things. I'll review them with you too. First thing was fix your routine. Second thing was find 10 minutes to do what? Quran recitation. Quran recitation. Third thing was listen to lectures, if not mine, other people's too. Other shuyukh and scholars, there are plenty of tafasir available now. But listen, instead of, in addition to reading. I know you'll do reading, but most of you won't do reading. That's why I started with listen. You download it, you passively listen to it in the car. Okay? You're going to find time. When you start reading, you get through two lines, you'll fall asleep. I know. I've been there. <laughs> right? So, instead of that, might as well, you're forced to stay awake, you're driving anyway. Pop it in and just listen to it. Okay? It'll help you tremendously. That, that's the second thing. Now the last thing. If you can get this into your routine, then you add the next thing. Start memorizing the Qur'an. Even if it's one line, half a line, I don't care. Even if it's one eye for a whole week, I don't care. 20 minutes, 25 minutes, whatever it is, full 100% concentrated time on just memorizing the Qur'an. This is your little secret, it's between you and Allah. The more Qur'an you are memorizing, you're telling Allah, Ya Allah, I took, I, I, my heart contains three more of your ayat. Ya Allah, my heart contains two more of your surahs. It's enhancing your love for Allah. And it's enhancing your love for the Qur'an. And the more Qur'an you memorize, then the more Qur'an you study, and the more Qur'an you use in your prayer, and it's becoming more and more and more of a companion in your life. But it starts small. It starts with 10, 20 minutes a day. Nothing more. If you can fix your morning routine, best time to memorize Qur'an in the morning. Absolutely best time. But don't overdo it in the beginning. If you overdo it, like, oh, I heard this lecture from tomorrow, I'm doing tahajjah tonight, then I'm going to go to pray fajr, and I'm going to memorize Qur'an for two hours, that will happen one time this year. <laughs> okay? That's why, you don't overdo it. Just take it easy, little at a time, it will build. Don't rush. Don't rush. Man ta'anna nala ma tamanna. Whoever takes their time will get to where they want to get to. 
Just take your time. 